viral. Last season, DeAndre Hopkins had 11 touchdowns, nearly 1,600 yards, leading to his second straight All-Pro selection. His hard work on the field recognized by the folks at EA Sports. Hopkins tweeted, I can't believe I'm one of four players ranked 99 in Madden. Guess that means I'm a great code now. A cheat code. I'm a cheat code now. I'm going to not lie and tell you I don't understand what that means. The other three 99s alongside him, Aaron Donald, Bobby Wagner, and Khalil Mack. This, I thought this meant the new best 99 players in the league. It no, 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 That's no, no. It's on, a, it's on a 1 to 100 rating scale. Right. 99. There's no 100 ratings in Madden, so 99 of the best players in the league. Uh, no surprise Nuke okay. made it. I mean, he's a great, great player, but him to be above Julio, above all the other great wide receivers we have in this league, Aaron Donald was a no-doubter. Nice to see Bobby Wagner get the recognition he deserves as the best defensive player on that Seahawks team for years now. Yeah, Luke Keekley's not a 99 on the defensive end. He didn't get it. Okay. He was last year, not this year. Khalil Mack gets it, played like it when he was out there last year. A.B., no OBJ, no Julio 99. Much respect. The only repeat is Aaron Donald, 99 on his jersey, 99 in last year's Madden, 99 in this year's Madden. My question is, what, what more does Patty Mahomes have to do? 5,000 yards, 50 touchdowns, league MVP, can't be a 99. I know he's young, but... Last year, there were seven players on the 99 list. They couldn't add a couple more. But more importantly, this is now 20 years that John Madden has been doing this? I mean, with the gaming and yeah. everything? Wow. Yeah. Remember when it first started? It was like Tech Mobile. It was like... Move one step up and two to the left, and now, 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 finish the sentence. I think, Jenna, you yeah. know what I think you're confusing Madden with? Atari? Tech Mobile. Oh. <laughs> I don't think it was like Tech Mobile. I think Tech Mobile was just like Tech Mobile. But I can't believe how far we've come. Yeah, you're old. Let's get, talk some answers. <laughs> The Browse officially announces a Lakers introductory press conference Saturday. So when you pair a former number one pick and a six-time All-Star in Anthony Davis next to arguably the best player in all top all time in LeBron James, you'd think the rest of the roster would just sort of fall into place. There was no falling for the Lakers. They strategically built a team around the two stars. If you ask Anthony Davis, he'll tell you this team is pretty unstoppable. I like our roster. I like, you know, every player that we have, um, you know, from 1 through 15 or 14, uh, <laughs> 1 through 14. So I'm excited about it. And, you know, I'll put our roster up against anybody. Um, I feel like that, you know, in a seven-game series that we'll come out victorious. CC, do you agree with Anthony Davis? If you put their roster up against anyone else's, would, there, would theirs be the best? I agree with the second part of the statement as far as they play a seven-game series. It's going to be hard to beat LeBron James and this team. No team in the NBA has three stars. Golden State, you know the reason why they went out and got Kevin Durant? Because LeBron James. AD knows that. And also, AD knows a couple other things. Last time he was in the playoffs, there's a couple other guys on this roster who were starters for the Pelicans, and that being Boogie Cousins and Rondo. Now, both of them with the other roster, depending on if they're going to start, Boogie Cousins is going to start probably. Rondo is not. So I could see... You have Avery Bradley, you add Danny Green, he's got Kuz on his team, LeBron, and now this is my team now? I can see why he'd been like, yeah, I'll take on the whole NBA. I can understand that. It is a talented roster, and you have to give Rob Palenka a lot of credit because after Kawhi, given the limited time that they had to respond, they had a plan B. They immediately signed, once they got word they were out of the Kawhi sweepstakes, they immediately signed Danny Green and began to fill out the rest of this roster a lot better, and you pointed this out, than last year when they signed LeBron James, the playmakers supposedly that they thought were adding to the roster compared to the shooting that they added to this year's roster, Nick. To me, there's, there's five teams in the league that have separated themselves a bit from a talent and potential fit and upside standpoint. That's with respect to Denver and Utah. I like what you did this offseason, but to me, they're not in this top five. There's the Lakers, the Clippers, and the Rockets, and then out east, there's the Sixers and the Bucks. To me, the Clippers and the Bucks, we know exactly what they're going, what they should be. Everyone knows their roles on those mm -hmm. teams. There's not going to be any, wait, I'm supposed to be getting more shots. Lou Williams knows what his job is. Montrez Harrell knows what his job is. Everyone knows on the Bucks. It goes Giannis, then Chris Middleton, and then everyone follows from there. Those other three teams 
have more of a boom bust to me. The Rockets could be dynamic. We talked Harden and Russ plus, you kept Gordon and Tucker and Capella, but also the, qu the fit question of Harden and Russ is a legitimate one. The Sixers, how will Horford and Embiid look playing next to each other? How much will they miss J.J. Redick? What will Ben Simmons come back as? If they, if they reach their maximum potential, if Simmons gets better, that team has as good of a starting five as anybody. And then there's the Lakers. They have the best duo in the league in LeBron and Anthony Davis. The next two guys, I think, are Kyle Kuzma and Danny Green, and then a question mark of what you're getting from Boogie. But if you go into a season where Boogie is your fifth most important player, where coming off the bench you either have Avery Bradley or Kendavious Caldwell Pope, whomever your sixth man is, that obviously, if they all fit together, can be the best team in the league. I think the Lakers' best, we were talking Madden before, NBA 2K-wise, their best version, no egos, no chemistry issues, would be the best team in the league, but that takes a lot of things. It takes Boogie being okay with maybe not finishing games, even if he does get to start games. It takes Rondo being okay with not being in crunch time really ever. It takes, it takes Kyle Kuzma doing what Frank Vogel said he had to do, which is put the effort and energy he has on the offensive end to the defensive end. It takes LeBron having, in year 17, the best year 17 any player has ever had. All those things have to fall into place. If they do, then the Lakers should feel good about their chances in a series against any team in the league. So I was going to ask you, well, what are we worried about with this roster? Because we seem to have a lot of optimism surrounding it. But you just laid out a number of things that have to happen if this is going to work. How optimistic, CC, are you that all those things, that LeBron's going to be back, that Kyle Kuzma's going to start shooting, that there'll be no personality issues with Boogie and Rondo being told they're they're not going to start it. How likely is it for all those things to happen? Yeah, Rondo, as a player, never be satisfied coming off the bench. That's just his type of attitude. That's the way he's made his career. And I can live with that, not being satisfied, but also accepting it. I don't agree with Nick. I believe Boogie Cousins is going to be closer to the Boogie we saw during the regular season. I don't believe there's going to be a problem. AD does not want to play the five. And Boogie's the best five. Well, still one of the best fives in the league, but definitely the best five that they have on the roster. You do have to have buy-in, not only from the role players, but you got to have a buy-in from LeBron James. Does he decide that I'm going to go to Anthony Davis and allow him to be the leading scorer on this team because I believe he should defer to Anthony Davis. Now, that don't mean LeBron's not going to get 25 or 26, but in certain situations that him deferring to Anthony Davis, I believe is the best thing for this team moving forward. So, yes, but there's a number of other teams that are going to have chemistry problems. Paul, Paul George. Paul George is his shoulders. How healthy are they? When will he be back to 100%? But the one thing in Nick's list as far as the five teams and their difference between those other teams is all those five teams have a superstar, not an all-star. And there should be, we should notice that there's a difference between an all-star and a superstar. Joel Embiid, he's a superstar. Ben Simmons, will he ever be a superstar? Giannis, there's no one on that roster that can be super, but will their teamwork, will everything that they do, will that be able to get them to a championship? Now, in Houston, that's the biggest question because they've had two guys that have been superstars. Can they coexist? I know LeBron and his superstardom can go with AD and his superstardom. And the other question is, if you take Houston out of it, because I probably am elevating Houston more than most people would. I think most people think the best two teams in the West are the two teams in L.A. and the best two teams in the East are Milwaukee and Philadelphia. Every team that I listed there, except for the Lakers, you can be very confident is going to be extraordinary defensively. Milwaukee had the number one defense in basketball last year. Philly just added Al Horford. I think they got better defensively than they were last year. The Clippers should be the best defense in the NBA. They were a good defense last year. They added Paul George and Kawhi Leonard. How good can the Lakers be defensively? They're not going to be a top five defense, but can they be eighth, ninth, tenth, somewhere in that top third of the league? When you have Anthony Davis as a rim protector, Anthony Davis, a guy who's been, when he's played full seasons, in the discussion for defensive player of the year, 
You bring in Avery Bradley, you bring in Danny Green. Those guys should make you above, well above average defensively, then plus the defensive level you'll get from LeBron come the postseason. That's the other biggest question for the Lakers, because the other great teams in the league, aside from Houston, I feel like we know are going to be right. excellent defensive teams. We don't know that about the Lakers yet, and that's also where Boogie plays a part, because even Boogie fully healthy, Boogie pre-injuries was not a great defensive player. How many crunch time minutes is Boogie going to play, and how much does that compromise your defense? The other question mark we're talking about is Giannis and how much better he can get than he was last year. The Greek freak coming off his first MVP, carrying Milwaukee to a 60-win season. But the 24-year-old believes this is just the tip of the iceberg. Said, quote, I think I'm at 60% of my potential. Nick, is there pressure on Giannis to improve after his MVP season? Well, there's going to be more scrutiny on Giannis. Giannis, every great player has gone through this, and it is the trajectory Chris Broussard said, which is until you win your first MVP, we just build you up, and once you win your first MVP, we start saying, where's the titles? Like, that, that, that is what Giannis, is what LeBron went through. LeBron got his team to a finals in year three or year four. Get won a couple MVPs, but hadn't won a title, went to Miami. Kevin Durant won an MVP early on. Didn't win a title, ended up leaving, going to Golden State to find it. James Harden's now won an MVP. What's the question with him? Where's the title? Russ won an MVP. Where's the title? Giannis, every step, every year he's gotten better. Every year he's averaged more points, more rebounds, a higher field goal percentage. Now, though, that we've seen him do everything that a player can accomplish, aside from playing in NBA Finals, win a championship, the, the scrutiny and the pressure will be get to the next level. I think Giannis would be striving for that no matter what, but it's enormous pressure on the organization, an organization that when we list all these best teams in basketball, the worst of the co-stars, with respect, is probably Chris Middleton. The least accomplished of the co-stars is assuredly Chris Middleton. Do they have enough around him to show Giannis in what, with two years left on his deal, one year until he would be able to accept or turn down a five-year, $250 million extension, that we have enough here in Milwaukee for you to take your third contract with this team, something the Cavs weren't able to do with LeBron, the Thunder weren't able to do with Kevin Durant. Convince them to not, not the rookie contract and the second contract, but that third contract in Milwaukee. To me, the more pressure's on the organization than on Giannis, because I think we've seen that Giannis will continue to do everything he can to grow his game. And most of the great players that we've seen, if we go down the list of the last 10 NBA MVPs, they all have this in them. It's not pressure. They're going to keep trying to grow their game. Giannis's goals would not have changed outside of winning the championship had they gone to the NBA Finals. He would have been like, well, we are a championship team. I'm still going to improve my game because eventually he would have ran into someone like Kawhi where the rules allow more physical contact in the playoffs. I just don't want Giannis to do what I've seen too many younger players do and they fall in love with the three-point line and, 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 and don't realize that that mid-range game, as much as he can get to the hole, as many dunks as we've seen anyone have since Shaq that mid-range games to me is the next measure of his game if he wants to open up the court if he wants to have more success in the playoffs just imagine he would have been successful against Kawhi if he could have shot from 18 yep. to 12 feet he didn't have that part to his game so much of the analytics now is pushing everyone from a low post to a three-point game and that is not the next step for him it's that intermediate game because he can go off the bounce he's great in transition tremendous on the defensive end I think that Giannis he has that internal pressure that typically all the great players we have seen a yearning to get better a yearning to win a championship i don't believe that the criticism will bother him because he didn't grow up playing basketball he's not wired into social media like the other guys we've seen so it won't affect him harden i don't think we have championship aspiration on him he was the mvp all the other mvps we have put that on them russ we don't expect russ to win a championship as the best player lebron yes Yes. KD, yes. Steph, yes. But I don't think Giannis falls in that category. Well, and Harden and Russ, it's almost by default that it hasn't fallen on them, and that's been the criticism. The criticism is as great as they are in the regular season, can they do it in the postseason? That has not been a criticism of Giannis. But let this team all of a sudden get upset in the second round next year and see what people are saying about him. Right. What I do want to remind and you... And it depends on how he plays. Of course, absolutely. It depends on how he plays and how all that plays out. 
But even though Jan's been in the league six years and it feels like he's been a star for four years, he's 24 years old. He's two years younger than Malcolm Brogdon, the guy they let walk. He's the same age as Kyle Kuzma. Like, he is just, he came into the league so young, so Still good, so young. young. He's not, he won't be 25 till midway through this season. Well, you got to go. That's it for us. We're back here tomorrow morning at 6.30 a.m. Eastern. Have a wonderful day, everyone. We'll see you tomorrow.